Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 16, and today we will be discussing the difference between type 1 and type 2 construction. Actually, this is not as hard as it sounds. There are only two things that you need to have in mind, regardless of the building type you are designing. One is the materials you are going to use for specific building elements, and two, if any of those building elements need to be provided with a certain fire resistive rating. There is a table at the beginning of IBC Chapter 6 that provides you with information for all building types in this regard. But the question was, what is the difference between Type 1 and Type 2 construction? Well, let's start by figuring out what type of materials we can use. IBC Chapter 6 is the chapter that details type of construction. If you look at Section 602.2, you will find something interesting. Type 1 and Type 2 construction have the same exact requirement when it comes to specific building elements. This section states that Type 1 and 2 construction are those types of construction in which the building elements listed in Table 601 are of non-combustible materials except as permitted in Section 603 and elsewhere in this code. So let's break this up into pieces. First when it states that you can only use non-combustible materials, it is referring to metal, concrete, CMU, etc. In other words, you cannot build with wood or timber or anything else that may be construed as combustible. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have any wood in your building. After all, most built-in casework and permanently installed doors are made out of wood. So what type of elements have to be non-combustible? To answer this question, we must look at Table 601. This table shows the requirements for six key building elements. Primary structural frame, bearing walls, non-bearing walls and partitions, both for exterior and also interior applications, floor construction, and roof construction. Section 603 also has some exceptions of other items that may be combustible. It's a long list of items. Currently, I believe there are about 26 different items that are exempted some of which we've already talked about, items such as millwork, doors, door frames, window sashes and frames, interior wall and ceiling finishes, finish flooring, and blocking that can be used for handles, millwork, or other items. Now back to the main elements. The second item we have to worry about is fire resistive rating. Here's a simplification of Table 601. You will notice, for example, that a Type 2B building does not need any specific ratings for any of the building elements. So as long as the building is constructed with non-combustible material, then you're good to go. You can have a Type 2 building. On the opposite end, you have a Type 1A building. You can see that almost all of the elements need to be rated. I'm not going to get into what makes a system rated in this tutorial, other than saying that Many of these systems can be built as 1, 2, 3, or 4 hour resistive ratings by looking over third party books and literature that provide tested assemblies that meet the required ratings. You will notice that the exterior partitions are the only ones that do not have a rating associated with them in this table, and instead they reference yet a second table 602. But don't worry, we're almost done here. Table 602 is only a reference to how far these exterior walls will be from another structure or your property line. For example, if you are less than 5 feet away from another structure or your property line, you will need to have a minimum of 1 hour fire separation for most occupancy groups. But some may require even 2 or 3 hours depending on the occupancy group. The further away you get from the property line or adjacent structure, the less likely it is that you will be required to have a fire resistive rating for your walls. So there you go my friends. That is the basic difference between a Type 1 and Type 2 construction. As a quick recap, we have learned that when it comes to construction materials, Construction Type 1 and Construction Type 2 have the same requirements. The main difference has to do with the rating of the elements, as per Table 601. Now, why would you want to have a Type 1 versus a Type 2 construction? Why would you spend so much money building it one way when you can build it with less money, a separate way? That is a great question. And I've made a video about that. Therefore, at the end of this video, I will leave a link. And hopefully you can watch it and get more information on that. Thank you again very much for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. 
If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button. If you like these types of videos, don't forget to subscribe. Below are a few other videos that I think you might like. But for now, this is Archie Corner, signing out.